Well, this case began about 25 years ago when a group of Anishinaabe First Nations north of Lake Superior sued the governments of Ontario and Canada, claiming the governments were in violation of the 1850 Robinson Treaty. Later, a group of Anishinaabe First Nations from around Lake Huron would join the suit. In that 1850 treaty, the Anishinaabe ceded a large swath of northern Ontario, more than 100,000 square kilometres, and in return, the Crown promised to provide an annual payment to each Anishinaabe person and made a promise to increase that payment over time based on the value of the natural resources extracted from the former Anishinaabe territories. But the last time the Crown increased that annual payment was 1875. The annual payment has been stuck at $4 per person per year ever since. Supreme Court Justice Mohamed Jamal wrote Canada and Ontario had made a mockery of their treaty obligations. Both Anishinaabe groups had already won their lower court cases and the Huron Anishinaabe, about 30,000 people, have already settled for $10 billion. Okay, so good news. The The superior Anishinaabe have not settled. This is a group of about 15,000 people. They are seeking more than $126 billion. Now, while the Supreme Court affirmed the positions of both the Huron and Superior Anishinaabe, the Supreme Court did not specify how much money the Superior Anishinaabe should receive, saying it was more appropriate that all sides negotiate a settlement. The court has given them six months to work it all out. So while well, Justice Jamal is silent on the actual amount that the superior Anishinaabe ought to receive, he does direct the Crown to approach negotiations, quote, liberally, justly, and in accordance with the honour of the Crown. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa.